Oh, hi, Janelle. Hi, Simone. Hi. I'm Christine. Um, I, um, I guess professionally, my career is um, I'm technically uh, I'm now director of UX, which is uh, user experience uh, design and uh, web development. So, but I got into that um, field uh, by being a hacker. My mom used to work at, at the studios, at CBS Studios, and she used to work overtime in the accounting office. Um, and they had a computer there, which is back in the 80s. And I just remember as she's working overtime, I'm learning how to, how to hack on like just a regular, like, you know, the black screen with the green writing on it, like in the 80s. Um, so from a very early age, I was, I was, um, I learned how to work computers and stuff, and I got into this field um, by way of trying to professionalize my hacking. Um, I'm also a survivor of domestic violence. I've just recently gotten out of an uh, 18-year marriage uh, where I was. I felt like I was stuck for the rest of my life, but I just, I just got out last year. I'm trying to use my skills to, towards helping other people so that they don't have to go through this. I'm on the phone with PayPal because that's who the money transfers went through it. And when I finally got through, none of my personal identifying information matched what they had. So I was locked out. I didn't realize at the time that it was actually my husband that was doing it. Oh my God. So not only did he systematically dismantle all of my accounts and my personal identifying information, but to my phone, he was also watching me through my phone. All my text messages, all my calls, my locations, my searches, everything went to him. And I was being physically abused. <clears throat> when I would call 911, the phone would just ring and ring and ring. No one would ever pick up. When I'd call a friend or my sister, the phone, same thing, it would just ring and ring. And conversely, whenever um, my sister would cry and call me, nothing so when i left in august 2020 um he i had broken into this he had this black locked box this trunk and inside i found like 30 a little over 30 phones oh laptops God. sd cards us um flash drives external hard drives and a locked um briefcase with a combination lock that i broke into as well and when i opened that one there was handwritten passcode books with cryptocurrencies, emails, account numbers, names, locations with latitudes and longitudes. Not just yours. It was no, it was a bunch of people. Like, I don't know who it is. Every time I'd start digging to try to find out who stole my identity, he'd break my phone or he'd take it. So I've quickly learned that if I asked questions, I'd get beaten up. And whenever his phone would ring or he'd get a notification, I get beaten up. I now have, have like this really weird fear of cell phone ringtones. I have, I have a little bit of the same. <laughs> like, <laughs> I have trauma from that. It, it's caused me to miss a lot of calls because of some similar situations. But yeah. Just in one of my, in my Yahoo email, it says, bind, there was an email that says binding camera. He has sent me pictures where it's taken with my phone, but I didn't take the picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are those secret spy apps that, that people can put into your phone and stuff. Um, all they need is for you to fall asleep for like a minute and then they can just, you know, upload it and then it, it will record you when you don't know it. Um, but those are like, you know, illegal spy apps. Is he military? Yes, he, he learned it in the military. Because that level of being able to hack into your phone and you're not even in the same state anymore, like that's... That's not everyday hacking. That is military grade. That's the only way he would be able to continuously track you is if if you're saying that you've gotten rid of all of your clothes, all of your belongings, all of everything that you wear that he could possibly plant some type of device in, it might be 
in your skin somewhere and and only somebody with military level knowledge would know that or would know the technology that that they use to do that um so when i was going like when i took his files um there's some weird things that i did find thing you couldn't really see anything in the video it'd be like little short clips of like maybe six seconds or five seconds or two seconds and they're all a lot of them are darkened so um i was actually talking to an internet um, watchdog person and they they recognized one of the um one of the files as something that they that people use to upload videos to the dark web oh shoot and make money off of so do you think that your husband may have been recording you and selling things to the dark web um i think he was recording someone i don't i don't think it was me i think it's possible maybe children I, i'm not sure Well, he stole all my, he stole my passport, he stole my drivers, my social, my green card, he stole all of my identifying information, everything. Like, he, he uploaded it. Oh my God. So he's already sold it. So your information has already been sold to like, wherever, the dark web or, you know, he could even sell it in the physical world. I've recorded him absolutely every FTC, everything that I can think of, I've done. And nobody has done anything? Nobody's done anything. DSS took my children when I tried to leave him. And I'm I'm from, I'm a Canadian citizen. They've been gone for 15 months now. I believe that him and his girlfriend took our daughter. She, has a, she was four at the time with a developmental delay and said that she was outside for over an hour. And I think he did that because one of the videos, I'm pretty sure, is him sexually abusing our daughter. Oh my God. And has she always been developmentally delayed or did it occur at a certain point? At a certain point. And I've taken her to doctors and geneticists. It's not genetic. I so think. it might be from trauma. Yes. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Yes. He's in foster care. I don't even know where my children are. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's... And then, but what, what's really surprising is that DSS was going to give my children to him and his mother. After you've already told them that, yes, that there's like, yes. you know, abuse. Yeah. And his, uh, his stepdaughter from a previous marriage, um, told the police and there's a police, an open police investigation against him for him possibly molesting her between when she was eight to 12. Oh my God. I'm, and I told DSS, I'm like, what is really going on here? Because basically what, what's, in my opinion, it's nothing more than child trafficking. What I'm wondering though is why are they even listening to him? Yeah, he's a pedophile. Yes, he's a pedophile. I'll tell you why they're listening to him because he was the first to report. Yeah. The first to report always gets a jump on the case. When you spoke to your child's doctor about like the, the moment that she started to seem developmentally delayed, um, did you let them know that you thought it was because of abuse? I didn't know. It definitely sounds like a much larger issue than just him. Like you're, you're dealing with an organization, like organized, organized crime here. I contacted a lawyer and who's only gonna help with um, the divorce because lawyers are provided against cases with DSS in South Carolina. So I'm filing for a divorce based on physical cruelty. And I'm going to try and use that to keep him away from the children. And um, as for the court ordered treatment plan from DSS, I'm week 15 into of 26, their family violence program. Um, one parenting class left, I've taken a mental health assessment. They want another one done. Taken six drug tests, something like that. Um, all because he made false ac accusations against you? Yeah. And, and does he have any of that going on for himself that he has to go through? They're not, they're not making him do anything. It's all court ordered, but he's not doing anything. 
Okay, so you're you're set to win this case. Yeah. Because he hasn't done anything. Okay. Well, that's a good thing. Yes. Um, yeah. And so after that's all said and done, does that give you your kids back? Uh, well, they're trying to adopt them out right now. What? It's already at that point? Oh. No, no. I signed the, the court order treatment plan June 2020, and they're, they've already started the, part, the paperwork to adopt my children out. How is that even possible? Exactly. Exactly. How is that even possible? I don't have I don't have family here. I don't have resources here. But that's still your child. Yeah, and but they don't care here. Oh my God. Yeah, I mean. So uh, I started the Instagram page to get public support to try and stop them. And you can't be unrepresented, or everything's going to be taken away from you, especially because you're Canadian. But you do have rights, you know. So I think that that should be your first goal is is finding that support because you can't fight this on your own you definitely need a legal team and an army like I said of, of folks that are fighting for you in every direction you've got so much going and, and kind of a time clock ticking cousin who because of how he grew up um, developed this strange fetish towards his mom my aunt um, and it triggered a lot of um, violent behaviors for him um, but being out of the presence of his mom caused him to grow up a little more normally so there was a time when when I adopted him and his sister um, to kind of prevent him from because he was completely normal when he wasn't with his mom and when he was with his mom he would have um, schizophrenic and violent outbursts um, so it sounds like your husband might have some of those tendencies that probably have never gone diagnosed or treated or you know have only been exacerbated by drugs this is the weird thing my sister was sold into trafficking and she recognized some of the names and some things in scott's passcode book that i took pictures of which suggests highly suggests that he was responsible at least in part for her being sold into trafficking he had started telling people at his work that i was a an escort I think that was his plan to sell you eventually yes to a human trafficker but and so his boss had called me and told me what he was saying and he told him told me that he was gonna fire him he said he, he didn't he didn't want that around and he was really tired of it and actually he did fire him and he hasn't had a job since well I think that there is like that's key to your whole case is this link to trafficking and your sister um, and possibly your daughter. Um, but I think that your sister part is, is a big deal. So she was sold into trafficking yep. uh, during she, your marriage? Yeah, she actually just got out of, uh, someone rescued her. She is severely, severely traumatized though. Uh, the FBI went and talked to her, she won't talk. Yeah, it's gonna it. take a long time, a, a lot of therapy. I hope she's in a lot of therapy. Yeah, she is. Um, but, uh, and I hope she's in a safe place as well. Like she is. Where That's why I'm, I'm afraid to go there. Yeah. Because I don't want. I don't want something more to happen to her. Because it sounds like he has. He's a threat to society. Yeah, um, he is. And that's what's really scary. And and everybody needs to know this. He needs to be on like the lists of you know. When oh. there used to be America's Most Wanted, but like you know he needs to be on those lists that you know people to watch out for. Because he can operate from his home as easily as he can out on the streets because he has access to a computer and exactly. he has military grade knowledge of how to hack things. And he's probably continuing to do what he does just virtually. And it's so easy to do that. Yeah. Um, to do trafficking from his home. Uh -huh. And he's probably continuing to do things to other people. Yes, I agree probably his girlfriends or ex-girlfriends or whoever mm -hmm. and their children as well mm -hmm. you know um and that's what's really really scary is that i mean i'm i'm a mother of five girls so i worry about that type of thing every single day he, he's he's connected with the bigger rings that are keeping him out of you know yeah out of there um but that's where you have to like kind of navigate really carefully um, based on what you're saying and based on who he is or who he was and who he might be connected to. 
this is way bigger than just one person. Like this is, it doesn't matter that he's on house arrest. There are there are eyes on you, and there there are more eyes on you than just his. So mm -hmm. he might have already sold you, for all you know. Oh my God. You know, and that and that might be why you're constantly being tracked and everything you do is is being hacked into is because you might already be property of somebody else. Oh my God. And not even know, you know. Um, so just be really, really careful out there. I mean, do you have, uh, like, other than your sister, do you have other family nearby? No, all my family's in Canada. And the reason you're not going back to Canada is probably because of your children. My children. Yeah. yeah, okay, that makes 100% sense. Um, do you have people you can trust? I don't know anybody. Well, except for, I know, I know someone, that's pretty much it. I mean, locally near you. No. Yeah, that's really scary. Um, and so you said the shelter that you were at, there are no longer people that you can trust or, or go to because they kick you out? Okay. It's possible, get, get some type of something to protect yourself with, whether it be a weapon or a chaser or anything, but just for the least bit, you know, um, just because I, I have a feeling like he's already, if he's in that ring, then that's probably mm -hmm. what's already happened. And you might already be property of somebody's. It sounds like he, he did already really confident that that was, that was happening. He was trying to pimp you out. He probably on some level feels like he was able to pimp out your sister. No, um, and in a weird psychotic way, your children. Um, but he sounds sick and demented, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't put any kind of like limit to his, his reach. But it sounds like that's what you're probably fighting that you don't know. Like, is this invisible force? It's probably something to do with trafficking. Is, is serious. It's like, yeah. Like why the money transfers to Albania yeah. and other countries, whatever. Yeah, just be careful because um, people are known to drug people to, you know, <sighs> information. So, like, whatever you're eating, whatever you're like, just make sure it hasn't been handled by anybody else. Like, if you have to, just make everything. Don't. Don't trust fast food if you're going through a drive-through. Like, you know, there are things that people can do to incapacitate you when you're least expecting it. So a lot of times that could be food. It, it happened in Canada already. Someone held me in a house for 12 hours. And I had to, I convinced him to let me go. But I, I gave him the husband or no? No. Yeah. Yeah, it's scary. Like it's, it's real. It's not just in the movies. It like is real. Movies, those movies are based on reality. The other part is um, calling your Congress people. I don't know who your Congress people are, but that's what they're there for. It's so interesting because when I was at NYU ages and ages and ages ago, um, my senior year, I was an intern for this organization called the Gabriella Network, which is uh, works against sex trafficking for women in the Philippines. Um, and I spoke at the UN, at the United Nations against sex trafficking wow. specifically, and I led protests in front of the UN and like we were on the news and everything, but like that was specifically sex trafficking was, was what I did my internship my senior year at NYU because that organization is fighting a, a worse government. So like in the Philippines, like mm -hmm. you can't even get a divorce. Like, so they don't recognize domestic violence as an issue. Their main export out of the Philippines is Filipino women, whether that be as nurses, as mail order brides, as sex workers, as whatever it may be, they export their women as commodities. Um, and it's not seen as 
abuse. So, but I, I do know that the UN does fight sex trafficking pretty, like they do have things in place um, to to fight it, and they they might know more people locally on the ground of that could help you as well, Janelle. Okay. Um, but I think that calling your Congress people should be next on your list, pestering them as well as your embassy should be like top priority because those those have power. Okay. Those have the type of power that can make the moves because especially saying the military connection and all of those things, there's there those are things that, you know, local police might be paid under the table, you know, and other people. That's why they're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. okay. And they could be part of the ring to kind of keep that ring going. Like that ring is reaches so far and so deep and so wide because especially now they can go on the dark web and they can just hide who they are. Um, they could be police officers by day and traffickers. No one would know. Yeah, no one would know. It's been a long battle for you. How have you been? How have you been? Um, I just know with me, like in going through this whole, you know, surviving domestic violence, like if not for the support groups that I've had, like um, the group therapy, the individual therapy, like I don't know how I would have made it, how have you made it? Have you, how have you been surviving all of this? Um, I do a lot of meditation and yoga. Um, I talk to Simone a lot and the watchdog, I talk to him every day too. I think it's just, I don't know. I was a lot worse off when I was with him mm -hmm. because like it was, I was like walking on eggshells all the time and not knowing when I was going to get beaten up. And as soon as that cell phone rang, I knew I was going to, I was going to get beaten up. Yeah. So I don't have that anymore, but I do keep my phone on like vibrate so I don't hear that cell phone ringing. So it was actually at the safe shelter. It was, it reminded me a lot like being with him. Oh. Yeah, it was really, it was very much walking on eggshells. It was very much um, do this or else, or else we're gonna kick you out. Do that or we're gonna kick you out. Follow these rules. Oh, you know what? We're gonna search your stuff. And if we find something, we're gonna kick you out. And that's exactly what happened. I have like a very, very good memory of all the events that had happened. The only, the only time I, where I don't remember things is the one day where I have just have flashball memories of being beaten up. That's the only day I can't remember. As for like dates and events and things that were said, I remember absolutely everything. You have a lot of, you have a lot of, um, a lot of leads. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> but you just need, you need a, a legal team to kind of like drive you mm -hmm. all the way home, yeah. And to make sure I don't get kidnapped. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's hard. That is so scary. <laughs> So you, I think you're right. Like he was watching me for like a long time. Cause how would he know? Yeah. He was probably watching you from before you were even married. Oh my God. He probably targeted you for whatever reason and your sister. I think so. I, I've told my sister that because both of our parents are, are passed away. And because our family's all up there, he probably thought like bringing being me here would be like an easy target. Yeah, like, you would have nobody like looking out for you, and you're like, yeah, hey, yeah. But my sister, like, she even said like she, that he picked the wrong person. She's like, you don't give up. She's like, you could cut your head off like a cockroach, and you still get up and you keep going and keep going and keep going. And she's like, and you don't, you're not the type of person to like to turn to alcohol or turn to drugs or do any of that that I didn't have that family support I didn't have parents he targeted I think he targeted me just because I was all the way from there and he didn't think that anyone would look for me or he didn't think that I would fight for my children yeah. and yeah. so I don't think it was anything that had anything to do with me per se personally it was just Predator. my circumstances yeah. and the fact that I don't know anything about computer programming 
So I was kind of like, he used my ignorance against me. He was telling people that I was a hacker and excuse me for saying this, but you know what? I really wish I was that smart, but I'm just not. Like, <laughs> I find computer programming, like I've, re I've tried reading about it and it looks like numbers and symbols to me. Like you have to have like a specific personality to like really get into it. And I, that's just, I'd, I'd rather look at makeup. <laughs> 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 just saying <laughs> some of it was kind of like um like a almost a slap in the face like oh my god i don't know why i didn't think of that that makes perfect sense kind of thing but so sometimes it's, a, it's an outside perspective that's needed you know to bring that light to you so you can do something with it now we have right. all this knowledge and all this power now it's just time to act on it yeah I mean, I, I feel like you you had all of those dots there, and as you started dating them, I was just it drew the the picture was like this is trafficking. This is yeah, like it wasn't like it was it was weird because I was talking to Simona about that because when I was in that like being beaten up every day and whatnot, everything it, it felt like it was a like a million piece puzzle, and there was like fog everywhere, and I just couldn't figure out anything that was going on. That's what he was trying to. To, to keep you in is in that yeah. so that he could keep you down and that you know right it's all a form of manipulation and control and once I was actually once he went to jail for four months but I still didn't have any of the proof that anything was going on and I DSS blocked me from taking the kids back to Canada I was like oh god he's gonna get out and something bad is gonna to happen to me, I know it. I know something bad's gonna happen. I said, the only protection that I have is to like kind of stay with him and kind of get him, make him, that, yeah, yeah, to make, make him think that I was still like stupid. Yeah. While gathering more evidence and that's exactly what I did. And so I hid money in a deodorant. So I just lifted it, like turned it all the way up and then put the money in there, put the deodorant back on just save money and save money meanwhile trying to gather evidence so when he was sleeping pick the lock but he had three different ones so sometimes it would work sometimes it wouldn't so slowly pick that lock and then take pictures and try and get as much evidence as I could and he kicked me in the back of the head one day and burnt my eyelashes off with a torch lighter oh my god How yeah do you not burn your whole face off if your eyelashes were I, I kind of moved back really fast and it was like and I started screaming because I was like, oh my God, I could have been blind. Yeah. And so I was sitting outside in the, my vehicle and he put a title on it. So yeah, it's gone now. And um, he was yelling at me from inside the house, it, the, his cousin's trailer. And um, he's like, go to the store, get me some cigarettes. And I kind of just looked over and I just started the vehicle and I started driving and I just kept driving. And I didn't go back. I thought, well, you know what? If I have everything, I have everything. I can't take anymore. He almost made me blind. I'm not staying another day. And I thought if I don't leave now, he's going to end up doing something way worse. Yeah. Like, how can you do anything to kids? Exactly. I don't know. I really don't know. I used to think that all parents love their children. Yeah, I don't think he ever learned how to love. And Janelle, we are here, okay? okay. You're, not, you're not by yourself, you're not alone by any stretch of the imagination, okay? Okay. Okay.